All right, welcome back to the Cutler Report. We are still puzzling through the investment strategy. Can the September rally last? Our all-star panel, John Rutledge, Tom Lydon, Stephen Abrams, Michael Pansner, we're debating whether this rally can last and whether we can have any resolution in Washington, D.C. Stop the forces of socialism. Now, let's just go to the checklist for a minute. Today's checklist. Start with the optimistic side. I'm putting jobs up there because today's report wasn't as bad as investors feared. We did create some private jobs, and the double dip is off the table. And I'm going to put the ISM services report because the August reading was above 50 percent and that does indicate expansion and I'm going to put gridlock up there because it does say adieu to cap and trade and card check and other socialist light things now on the pessimism side notice it's the same as the optimism side. That's a little <laughs> weird. Not really. Jobs, yeah, but it was an anemic report with a 9.6 percent unemployment rate, so it's not good. ISM, yeah, but it was barely positive and very frazzled around the edges, and I worry about the growth slowdown. And finally, gridlock. Well, if gridlock means the Bush tax cuts will expire without a congressional President Obama deal, then that might be very troubling. So I hope I've confused everything. Now, I want to go to Tom Lydon. Tom, you didn't really get your share in that last segment. And I want to ask you two things. Number one, are profits strong enough to run the rally up? And number two, is socialism being stopped in America? Well, profits are strong enough. You know, earnings season was fantastic. 80% of reports beat. And when you take the double dip opportunity or option off the table, Larry, that adds, adds more confidence, and that's what investors are looking for. Corporations are sitting on $3 trillion in cash. Mm. Mergers and acquisitions are picking up. IPO talk is picking up. U.S. corporations are in great shape. It's just getting the average investor to take a minute and look at it and see the great values and the potential great growth out there. John Rutledge, very fundamentally, I've been making this case all week since I got back from holiday. Record high profits and virtually record low treasury rates has to somehow be good for stocks. Do you agree or disagree with that? Uh, absolutely. And, and this week we also erased the emerging market collapse story mm. Mm. when we got good numbers out of China. Oh. And, so, uh, and so that's brought back the commodity markets and, and so forth. I think we're nearing a kind of magic moment. On your negative list, there's policy, the socialist policies. There's also no bank loans for small private companies. Mm -hmm. That's where jobs come from. The policy switch may be turning in November in a positive direction. And what we know about the credit markets and the loan business is when they come back on, they come back on big mm -hmm. like they did in 2004. If you can turn both of those switches in the right direction, you could have a huge improvement in the market and jobs and in the economy and with all the first half of next year. With all the pessimism, that kind of sets the stage, right? A I mean, absolutely. 7% earnings yield. Uh, right. If you can turn the tax rates, that's the question I think Tom said, is you need power in the in the uh, Congress in order to keep the tax rates where they are today to roll, to undo this tax increase. Stephen Abrams, what are you investing in right now? You sound like you're relatively optimistic, at least at the margins. How are you playing it, Stephen? Well, I am I am relatively optimistic, Larry, because I think the market expectations at this level are now realistic. And I think that uh, even with sluggish one and a half to two percent GDP growth, the big multinationals, particularly in energy, industrial materials, industrial equipment, and transportation, uh, are going to lead the way. And I believe that the last four months of this year are going to be a heck of a lot better than the first eight mm. months. Interesting. Michael Panzer, you are not optimistic. How are you playing it? Well, uh, John mentioned that we're nearing a magic moment. I think we are actually at a magic mushroom moment because people have been <laughs> really imbibing something that doesn't reflect reality. Not enough clarity. On the first, too many the mushroom. Mushroom. On the first yeah. point, why is double digit off the table? We've got the ECRI index turning down negative uh, 10%, which has clearly been a good indicator in terms of the economy in the past. Why is it being ignored now? But on the earnings side, an interesting story in CFO.com today says companies, they analyze cash flow, companies are still husbanding cash and they're still really sheltering resources and holding back on investments in inventories and in uh, but capital equipment. But isn't that equipment. great for yeah, the value of their companies? I mean, the shareholders no, they're, they're, will benefit, they'll pay dividends, they'll buy back stocks. I mean, didn't you, look, you knew Calvin Coolidge. 
Mr. Coolidge said the business of America is business. If business is pristine, isn't that bullish for the stocks that represent the claims against business? It may be on a short-term basis, but it's an earnings management philosophy, short-term versus long-term. You need to be investing in your companies. You need to be building for the future. You need to be hiring people, which they're not, hiring people to plan for that growth going forward. All of this is a sort of a management process that says, let's just keep ourselves safe because we don't believe in this recovery that everyone keeps Keeps talking about. John Rutledge, how do you respond to Michael Panzer? I've tried for years <laughs> with no success whatsoever. Yeah, by yeah. the way, he has a very good forecast. Yeah, absolutely. Like, give absolutely. Him that. How absolutely. do you react to what he's saying? Uh, that those guys are holding three trillion dollars of cash for a purpose. The purpose is to spend it. And this question is when they're going to start spending that money. These are the companies, as Stefan said, that also are responsible for U.S. exports because the growth in buying is in Asia. And so when we do get that cash deployed both by the investor and by the companies themselves that's when you can get a big bulge in uh, consumers or in capital spending mm. but it will take clarity for those oh, managers no. to make that decision no, no. I can't this is too hard for I think another that riff on clarity I think that November the election results might give us some of that oh, by helping right. us to understand the path of policy for more than six months at a time Tom Wine, my vision of clarity is to stop socialism in the government and to start profits in the private sector. Now, we're part of the way home, Tom. How do you invest in this September rally, just to be mundane and materialistic about it? Well, don't just look at uh, U.S. stocks and the S&P 500. Number one, on the fixed income side, corporate bonds, high-yield bonds are great. You know, on, on the uh, high-level area, you've got five and a half percent on the high yield area you're going to get over nine percent there's some great etfs that represent that asset class in gold not just gold spot gold like gld but even it gold remains at this level of 1250 the miners are hugely profitable at this point you saw gold corp had the big acquisition today if they can pull gold out of the ground for two dollars and seventy five dollars right. i mean two two hundred and seventy five dollars the profitability is huge larry right. and then finally look i look overseas chile for example what a great etf the number chile. one producer in oh, copper I love I love around that. the world you know so there are economies around the world that you have access to v etfs we just don't have to look here at the u.s and the s p 500 right. if we get over 1150 we should be in good shape all right i'm going to leave it there you're all great john rutledge tom Lydon, stephan abrams and michael pansner up next on cut the house likely going republican the senate still up for grabs but a lot of blue and purple states may go to the gop and maybe some of these democrats will wind up getting on the bush tax cut bandwagon the end of socialism and profitable America, a midterm election.